So the yips is a description given by people who golf of a twitch or jerk or involuntary movement when usually putting, but also can be when they're chipping or making other motions. But it's just a colloquial term. It doesn't stand for anything particular. It's thought that uh, some people with the yips have more of a psychological problem. They get performance anxiety or have trouble, especially in a tournament or a pressure situation. But there are other people with the yips that likely have a neurologic problem, much like writer's cramp or musician's cramp, in which they actually have a neurologic cause. We call it dystonia or tremor. It's an involuntary movement disorder. Uh, there are many involuntary movement disorders that can be task specific, meaning they only occur with a specific task. And in this case, it would be golfer's cramp. So only when performing a golf movement, such as moving the putter, does the involuntary movement actually come out. So we had done a couple of different studies which showed that there is increased rotation of the wrist in golfers who, who had the yips. Uh, and some of the data suggested that there was also an increase in co-contraction, meaning that the movement of the wrist flexors and extensors, they would contract at the same time, which would not be considered a normal thing to do. In the new study, we looked at 27 different golfers, all of whom complained of having the yips. We had them do 10 putts with two hands looking at the ball when they putted, and also with right hand only. And in doing those uh, 20 pots, what we were able to then do was look at videotape, specifically of when they did the two-hand pots. And we saw five golfers who had a very, very stereotypical type of movement. They had a specific jerk or twitch that occurred in over 50% of their pots. And we thought they had a neurologic cause. We saw nine golfers who had some movements that didn't look very stereotyped. It looked like they were pushing the ball or trying to maneuver their hands, and we did not think they were neurologic in, in etiology. And then there were 13 golfers who, during those 10 putts, had no evidence of the yips, even though before we did the study, they looked like they had the yips. There were a number of different variables that differed between those groups. So we now have a quantitative method, we believe, to compare those with a neurologic cause and those without and actually find distinctions between the two of those groups. So first of all, we need to do further studies to validate that and be sure that that really separates out the groups. But most importantly, it would need to be treatment. We need to look at how treatment affects these parameters, both the number of yips, the number that get co-contracted, and the variables in the, two, in the two different measures, the Opal sensors and the uh, SAM putt lab. So we need to see if there is a way to show that those differ uh, when it comes to treatment effects. It's our belief that treatment is going to be different for people who have a neurologic cause and a non-neurologic cause. Uh, and if we can identify golfers now using quantitative methods uh, who have neurologic versus non-neurologic, we can actually make recommendations for uh, what things might be beneficial and then hopefully determine that they are or not using these parameters. So the biggest issue with dystonia especially has been finding quantitative methods to be able to diagnose somebody as having a neurologic cause. So again, when looking at musician's cramp, when looking at writer's cramp and the movements of the hand, it's been very difficult to make a diagnosis other than by just looking and examining the individual. So number one, our hope is that this type of data will translate to studies of other types of dystonia, including other sports. There are other types of sports in which there is uh, what would appear to be a neurologic cause for a movement problem as opposed to a psychological cause. Baseball players uh, for example, who have difficulty throwing a ball, maybe basketball players who have difficulty with shooting a, a basketball, it's possible this could translate into studies of those as well. But for 
typical uh, golf, I mean, writer's cramp and uh, musician's cramp and other types of focal dystonia, if we find better methods of quantitating those, just like we're hopefully finding for the golfers, that may lead to better uh, treatments and at least monitoring how the treatments are working.